All right, here we go. Learn JavaScript core concepts. So a quick note, if you're coming from a classical programming language, such as Apex to JavaScript, this module is for you. So a quick disclaimer, this module assumes you are familiar with fundamentals of JavaScript, such as basic keywords, operators, and syntax, but still relatively new to the language, okay? But as we go along throughout this module, you'll just pick up automatically. Just follow along and we learn this together. So this, this purpose is to help you understand the what and why of certain features of JavaScript so that you can write better code in Lightning Web Components, LWC, Aura Components, or any JavaScript framework. So what's the learning objective? Uh, we are able to describe the nature of the JavaScript runtime environment. We're able to distinguish between the JavaScript engine and the language, avoid keep it false when learning JavaScript, and describe some important JavaScript best practices. So we're gonna chunk this particular uh, section into several videos, maybe three or four, uh, so we don't go too long and we can focus and dissect each section appropriate, appropriately, because this will be the foundation. The core concepts will be the foundation which will be built, uh, which we will be building upon. So we want to have a, a, a strong and, and solid foundation, right? So let's get started. There's a bit of JavaScript history here. I'm gonna just skip that. You can read that on your own. So fast forward to the present and the world is a different place, okay? So now um, the current time, 2022, Instead of server-side frameworks, modern web applications tend to be client-side rendered, meaning it's rendered on your web browser. If, you're, if you've worked mostly with Visual Force pages and Apex controllers, you might need a leg up to really get how JavaScript works so you can better understand your components. Time to level up your JavaScript skills. This is exactly what we are doing. So we will start by understanding the JavaScript runtime, All right? What is the JavaScript runtime? The JavaScript runtime is an engine, is an engine that interprets JavaScript code. So when we're writing the JavaScript code, the JavaScript runtime is the one that's interpret these codes we are writing. It says it can be part of a browser or other runtime environment like a server, like a Node.js and stuff like that. We will talk about that later. So modern JavaScript engines are sophisticated and powerful to optimize execution and design to conform to the ECMA script standard. Now, this is the important one. The defining feature of the JavaScript engine is a single threaded runtime. So a JavaScript engine is a single threaded runtime rep represented by the stack below. So instead of going through this um, um, visual graphic image explanation, I'm going to play a short YouTube video from another author, which I think is explaining it clearly and simply. So let's just uh, play that video so you would understand how this single threaded um, mean and what uh, what is a stack or a call stack or the queue or the event loop means, all right? Okay, let's go there. And I'm gonna just play this video. Since JavaScript is single threaded, there is one thread that executes everything that's on this page. Now let's say the user clicks a button that runs code that, uh, I don't know, calculates the thousandth prime number. The user clicks on it and the thread is off doing its thing. But then the user immediately clicks another button. Now what does the thread do? Does it drop what it's doing? No, it makes a mental note that it needs to execute that event. 
another event happens, it makes a note of that too. And once it's finished this long running task, it picks the next thing it had to do. The thing that it's using to make note of the events that are happening when it's busy, this thing is called an event queue. It's a queue of events, so what else are you gonna name it? It's first in, first out ordering of events. It's an event queue. Now, whenever the single execution thread is done executing, whatever it was doing, it goes through this queue of events and executes them until the queue is empty. You can think of the logic as something like this pseudocode shows. While the event queue is not empty, pull out the first item from the event queue and then execute it. This is a loop that looks at all available events and executes them till there isn't anything left. Yup, you guessed it, this is the event loop. So basically the event queue is like a to-do list for the thread and the event loop is the thread continuously checking this to-do list and doing those things until there isn't anything left. So I'm gonna stop there. So here we learn about event queue and event loop. So what is the event loop doing? Event loop is going to keep checking if there is anything on the event queue that the JavaScript runtime needs to do, right? It's gonna keep checking. How can this event queue gets populated? By the user interface, by a click of a button, right? It goes, uh, oh, this button was clicked. What do we do with this? Or also APIs. For example, if you are using a phone, um, uh, a geolocation API can trigger an event and it triggers something here. Or the orientation of your phone changes, it triggers an event, it's called an event, right? And it goes into the queue and it just line up there. The queue, uh, this the single threaded means everything will be lined up. It will only be executed as first in, first out basis. So it's gonna be like a long lineup, it's, it's going to try to execute the, the first one in, right? until the first, uh, the last one in. So it's gonna do that. So this is what explaining, um, this is the event loop, this is the event queue, and the stack. The stack is the one that's executed one at a time. Okay, it's gonna keep checking, and then it puts it on the stack and then execute, execute that. So I think I just want to show you that video. Um, let me fast forward a bit here. Similarly, when a single thread picks up an event and that event happens to be a function that calls another function which calls another function, well, the single thread has no choice but to follow that stack of function calls until the first function has completed executing. This kind of nested function calls is usually managed by most runtimes using a stack data structure. So if I move this back a bit, as you can see, um, function A is calling function B, and function B is calling function C. So what will what will happen, right? This is the call stack, and it's gonna execute in an orderly fashion. Function A is going to uh, be executed, and then it's calling function B. Then function B is going to be executed, and it's calling function C. And then function C is going to be executed. So you can see how simple event loop and the event queue concepts are. This also explains a lot of the JavaScript behavior you see in browsers, by the way. Take the instance of when you have a browser tab which is hung because some function is running slow and then you click on a button on a page two or three times. What happens? You don't get an immediate response, but then when that long running thing finishes running, all the times you clicked on that button respond together after. See, JavaScript runtime remembers because every time you click that button, the handler got added to the event queue. Okay, so that's why it's called single threaded. So when you click the calculate button, and the calculate button is a long running function. It's a complex piece of code, maybe a thousand lines of code, right? You click on calculate and then it's doing its thing it's trying to calculate this complex algorithm, and then, huh, it's doing nothing, right? As a user, you don't know what's going on in the back, and you, I wanna say hello now. I'm, I'm gonna keep clicking, say hello. It's not gonna do anything, because it's single-threaded. It will not respond to this button clicks 
until this calculate is completed. Once its calculate is completed, all the clicking on here is going to be inside the event queue, right? It's going to keep piling up in the event queue, and then this will be will be firing one at a time suddenly. So you can see poop, 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 hello, hello, hello. It happens right away. That happens quite often when we're doing stuff on our browser, right? So that's um, how um, the the single thread and the event loop, event queue um, um, is, is going on. So I hope you understand that as a mindset. So when you're building Lightning Web Component, you have an understanding that JavaScript is a single threaded um, a, a runtime engine. So don't expect it's gonna um, you know complete all kinds of of um, a function calls at the same time. It will not. It will do it one at a time. Okay. So that's that. I'm gonna cut this until this part and uh, let's focus the next section on a separate video. I hope you. I I hope you have a good foundation there. Bada bing, bada boom. Hit that subscribe button and explore new trailhead grounds and learn to implement the most useful and popular apps on the Salesforce app exchange. And do yourself a favor, like this video and you'll be surprised on how much more you understand when watching this same video after liking it. Don't take my word watch this one more time after you like the video and see it for yourself bada bing bada boom